So why did Congress fail to include funding for extended unemployment benefits in the recent budget deal? Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Frank Pallone. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, now as I understand it, you were among 176 Democrats who sent a letter to Speaker Boehner, Boehner urging him to address this issue uh, before the year wrapped up. Obviously right, that right. didn't happen. Was there just not enough support in the House? There really wasn't, and I think a lot of it had to do with Republican opposition, to be honest. There's this notion out there, which I think is false, that somehow, you know, the recession's over, it's easy to find a job, and, you know, the people that are on unemployment, you know, don't need it anymore. And nothing could be further from the truth, to be perfectly honest. I mean, if you think about it, we still have, I think, 1.3 million fewer jobs today than we did before the recession, and there are, like, there are three people unemployed for every job that's available. So this notion that you can easily find a job is simply not true. Now, as I understand it, Speaker Boehner said he would only consider this proposal if you found other cuts. Does that seem fair? I don't think so. I mean, again, uh, everyone talks about the debt, and of course we have to deal with it. But, you know, as a percentage of the gross national product, the, the debt is at an all-time low, I think, since the early 1990s or so. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't try to find cuts in other programs, but I don't think that that's really the issue right now. I don't think that the debt is an immediate problem. As I understand it, New Jerseyans are probably the hardest hit. I think more than 1% of the state's po population is affected, and that's the highest of any state. Right. I think that uh, if there would be 1.3 million people as of tomorrow, well, December 28th is the last day of unemployment from the federal level, and uh, 1.3 million people nationwide that would lose benefits, and in New Jersey it's over 90,000. So basically what happens is after, to, after December 28th, uh, the only benefits you will receive are your state benefits, the 26, 26 weeks. weeks. Mm -hmm. The extra 37 are gone. So beginning January 1st, uh, anybody who reaches the, the 26 weeks, that'll be it. And so we estimate that for the next six months, if we don't do something, there'll be like another 1.9 million people nationally and another 90,000 in New Jersey that would run out of benefits because they'd run out of their state benefits in the next six months. But you would have to acknowledge that um, the unemployment rate has come down. There are signs the economy is oh, improving. Yeah. I'm not, look, I'm not suggesting in any way. We do have growth in the economy. There are a lot of very positive signs. You know, manufacturing's up, housing starts are up. Uh, and consumer. this was meant to be a temporary program, always, right? right? There's no question. But I just think that uh, it, it isn't true that we're, you know, out of the recession or that we're completely out of the problems. And so I think most of the people that are on unemployment or extended unemployment right now, you know, they, they have to certify that they're looking for a job. And I think it's still hard to find a job. The other thing, Desiree, too, I would say is this, that it actually benefits the economy. In other words, we know that when you, uh, the money that goes for unemployment compensation, I mean, basically is spent right away. And so to the extent that the, the economy is fueled by consumer spending, you know, the people that receive unemployment, they go out and spend it right away. And that just fuels the spending. And uh, I sort of figure that for every dollar in unemployment compensation, it, uh, it boosts the economy by $1.50. So this is actually something that helps the economy uh, in the long run and actually will, you know, bring more tax revenue in and I think create more jobs. Is it likely that uh, Congress will address this issue when you reconvene? I think there's a good chance. Uh, I mean, both uh, Harry Reid, Senator Reid, who was the majority leader in the Senate, he said that he was definitely going to bring it up. And I think that Boehner, if we continue to push, uh, is likely to do something as well. So, you know, we go back on January 6th and I'm going to be part of a push and and pressure and say, look, this has to be done. We need these benefits. Meanwhile, still to be considered possible cuts to the food stamp program, SNAP? Could it's, be a very, double whammy? You know, it's a very similar ph phenomenon, Desiree. You know, th this idea that, that uh, you know, we should cut back on food stamps, uh, again, it makes no sense. I mean, uh, people are hurting. And even if you talk to anybody, you know, during a holiday season at the food banks, they say there are more people than ever that show up at the food banks, yet they don't have the money or the food to actually take care of the people that have reduced SNAP benefits. So uh, SNAP, or food stamps as we call it, were actually cut November 1st because the uh, stimulus money that helped, you know, f provide extra benefits expired. Now there's a farm bill, which is another bill that we're going to address when we come back in January. And there are cuts, uh, various cuts in the House or Senate versions of the Farm Bill. 
uh, that would uh, un likely result in even more cuts to food stamps. So again, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to suggest that things aren't getting better. They certainly are. There's growth in the economy. But cutting food stamps, just like ending unemployment compensation, really doesn't make sense because a lot of people are hurting. And again, you know, the spending on these, uh, on these initiatives actually does help the economy. Okay. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up there. Congressman, thanks so much. Thank you.